Hey there, what's going on? My name is Bruce Ulrich. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this really beefy leg vise for my traditional woodworker's workbench. I made this workbench in a previous video, so I'll put a link to that over here. But I purchased these plans from Jay Bates. He has an excellent set of plans and some videos that he put out walking you through it. That's what I use, so I'll link to his plans below. But let me show you how I made it. I started off with the hardware on this one. I wanted to customize the color of the hardware and I taped off all the sensitive parts, scuffed up the paint and sprayed a couple of coats of my logo color on it. I wasn't sure about the color at first, but if you watch until the end, I think you'll see that it looks really good with the rest of the setup. Fourteen years ago, Hurricane Katrina ripped apart the Gulf Coast along Mississippi, Louisiana, and more. Mississippi didn't get as much of the coverage, but we definitely had our fair share of devastation. A little over 200 miles north is where I live, just outside of Jackson. We got nowhere near the damaging winds as the Gulf Coast, but the hardwoods took the most of the beating, falling all over the place and causing us to be without power for eight days. You see, it had rained for days and many speculate that the thirsty trees had drunk their fill during the preceding rains. Then, when the hurricane force winds hit, they fell with relatively no resistance. My parents probably lost more than 30 hardwoods, some of which were more than 60 years old. One of those hardwoods was this red oak tree you've been watching me glue together and mill up. When this one fell, we found someone with a portable sawmill and the deal was that he could take one of the other large pecan trees if he would mill this one into slabs, so he did. We stickered and stacked them in the barn and they've sat there for years. It's neat to know that I'll be able to remember how fortunate we are that nobody in my family was hurt each time I use this leg vise. And this is one I might be handing down to my kids one day. I'm glad for that kind of a story. I'm making my own wipe on poly for this finish and for that I'm using equal parts polyurethane, boiled linseed oil, and mineral spirits. I've used this finish on a few things before and it is very easy and hard to mess up. The wipe on poly that you buy is very similar in the mixture. I measured out what I needed by making a line on these cute little kid cups because why not? Then I just wiped it onto all the surfaces generously, making sure not to leave any runs. I applied a coat of paste wax to the top after that, letting it dry and then buffing the wax off. This will protect it from glue and some other stuff and not be too slick or plastic looking. Then I started laying out where the hole needed to be drilled for the hardware. I took it over the drill press for this. I started laying out some of the shape I wanted I pretty much just followed what Jay Bates' plans had and then I cut that over at the bandsaw. While at the bandsaw, I also cut out the wedge I will be using for the floor. And you'll see a little bit more about how this works later. Then it was inside to the laser engraver to cut out a wooden token with my logo on it. I started cutting in the wedge shape with a basic handsaw and this left kind of some gouges. I'm not the best at sawing, but this is also not a really precision tool. Most of the way through it, I remembered that I had a Japanese style pull saw that was a little bit better, so I finished off the cut with that. I drilled out a shallow hole with a Forstner bit to accept the little wooden logo token and then I used some 5 minute epoxy to set that in place. I didn't want to get the epoxy all over my clamps so to put some pressure on this token I cut a small piece of wood and then used my scrap pieces of steel to weigh it down. After that dried I flushed it up with my random orbit sander and turned my attention to the handle. 
I used some of the off cuts of the leg vise to make this handle blank. I just glued them together so I could turn them on the lathe at a later point. Then I marked the holes where the hardware needed to be secured and secured them by pre-drilling and then adding some screws. Jay added a dowel to his hickory leg vise that he built to help keep the leg vise from swinging side to side. I drilled out a quick hole and added a one half inch dowel I had on hand. I left it full length, but I will trim it to size later. In case you're wondering, I'm using the Yoast leg vise hardware and it is relatively inexpensive. At the time I purchased it, it was about $50 and it seems to be made very well. I'll leave a link below to the exact one that I used. Next up was the handle. I cut off the harsh corners from what you saw me glue up earlier so it would be easier to get into round. I'm not going into a ton of detail about the turning process in this video, but I've done some other turning on my channel and I definitely plan to do more. If you have specific questions about turning, leave them in the comments below. The basic process is get it into round, Use a rougher to get it into the general size you need and then measure often with some calipers to make sure you're sizing it properly. Then I just sanded it with 80 grit, 150 grit and 350 grit. A trick you can use is a handful of shavings once you get it quite smooth. Rub these on the piece while it's spinning and it will really burnish it and give it a nice look. Then I just added a bit of Mahoney's walnut oil and I buffed it on high speed with a paper towel. I cut out a little spacer that would encase the dowel. After a little tweaking, that worked quite well. Next, it was on to the leather. I used a piece of paper and created a rubbing like you used to do in grade school with leaves. This allowed me to see exactly where the edges of the leg vise were with no measuring. I took that paper to my leather and cut out a piece that was just slightly larger than the marks. I wanted a little bit of extra so I could trim the leather flush at the end for a more perfect look. This is just some really thick veg tanned leather. Then I used a hand plane to flush up the leg vise to the workbench top. Be sure to come at it from both sides though so you don't get a bunch of chip out. I use contact cement to secure the leather to the leg vise. Be sure to wear a respirator when you're doing this because the contact cement is really stinky stuff and it's not good to breathe at all. All you do is apply a coat of it to both surfaces that you want to be stuck together, let it dry for about 15 minutes, and then press it together. After it adhered quite well, I used a razor to trim the leather flush with the sides of the leg vise. To secure the handle to the hardware, I just measured to make sure it was centered, pre-drilled, and then added a couple of pan head screws. They were enough that this handle would not fall out, plus I did not have to drill through the metal part of the vise to hold the handle in. This was much easier and it's not in the way at all. I mixed up another batch of homemade wipe-on poly and used that for a finish. I was careful not to get any runs, but look at how that spalted red oak looks with a bit of finish on it.
really love the way this thing came together. It functions great, it looks great, and I'm happy I made it. So I've got a piece of leather here on one jaw, and that's so that I can grab the material quite well. I turned this piece out of the leftover cutoff from the leg vise itself, and I just put a couple pan head screws in there so that it won't fall out. I repainted the hardware, and I love the way that turned out. Let me show you how this works. So two by material goes in there until it just engages at the top and kick the wedge in at the bottom and about a quarter turn more and it's super sturdy. Uh, if you need to do some different material, this is half inch and you just pull out the wedge here, get your material where it engages at the top then kick the wedge in and about a quarter more turn and it's not going anywhere. So. I love how that functions. This is a super simple way to operate this. I'd love to hear what you think. What kind of vice solutions or holding solutions do you use in your shop? This is my first one and I'm loving it so far. I'm really gonna like being able to use both hands when I'm doing some operations. Um, also, I'd love to see what your workbench is looking like. What have you made? I have a couple different iterations over the years. This is just the most recent one. So tag me over on Instagram, at BrewDaddy, I'd love to see. If you haven't already, I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of my future uploads. Be sure to click that bell. Give the video a thumbs up. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.